If you travel full-time or long-term, or you live abroad as an expat, or you even just find yourself moving around a lot and you hate changing your mailing address, this episode is for you. Today we are covering various ways for you to get mail that don't tie you down to a mailbox. Before you even start figuring out how or where to get your mail, the first thing to do is to reduce the amount of mail that you get in the first place. And this process starts months before you even leave home. I say months because not a lot of mail we get is super regular. So taking a critical look at the mail you do get may take a while. Reducing the amount of physical mail that you get is a two-step procedure. First is to get yourself off mailing lists. If something comes in for you that you don't wanna get again, contact the company and ask to be removed from their list. The second thing to do is to move the mail you do want to get to online options. Most financial institutions and services and whatnot have paperless statement notification options. You're going to want online accounts to manage everything anyway, so moving to the paperless option is easy to do. Basically, look at every single piece of mail that comes in and ask yourself, how can you never get that again? Now, this works for the majority of your mail, but you can't entirely get rid of all of your mail. For some things, you'll still need an address. This, things like government correspondence, which includes not only tax stuff, but also things like your driver's license, ID cards, etc. So for any mail that you can't move online, and even the stuff you can move online, but for which you still need to provide an address, here are three ways to get your mail. Now, these techniques all require you to change your mailing address, which might be a hassle, especially if you're going on a trip of limited duration. If that's you, and if the following methods don't float your boat, at the end of this episode, I will give a bonus tip to get mail that doesn't require you to change your address at all, and it comes with some additional perks too. But first, the first way to get your mail while you travel full-time or long-term is also the cheapest way, as in free and that is to change your address to the home of a family member or friend. This is exactly what I did when I started traveling full-time back in 2006, AKA the prehistoric times of being a digital nomad, when digital nomad wasn't even a word that existed or a concept that people understood, much less a lifestyle that tens of millions of people had. So I just changed my address to my mom's place and she sent me a message whenever anything came in that looked like it might be important. I'd sometimes ask her to open the mail and take a picture of the contents and send it to me. And very occasionally I got her to forward the mail to me wherever I was in the world. Here's the thing. Not everybody has a friend or family member who is up for the task of being your official mailing address. And quite frankly, it's a bit of a hassle for them to take on that responsibility. Also, it requires quite a bit of trust for you to rely on them to deal with your mail and whatever private matters might be enclosed in those letters. So for another option that doesn't require somebody to open your mail, you can forward your mail to a PO box. This ensures that not only will your designated friend or family member not open your mail, but nobody will. So unless you can be absolutely sure that nothing will come in that requires your attention while you're traveling, the PO box is a bit of a risky route. Also, not all official institutions like banks and government entities will accept P.O. boxes as official residences for getting official mail. So although I have spelled this out as an option for getting your mail, admittedly, there will be very few situations when it's actually appropriate or feasible. This brings me to the main topic of this video, which are virtual mailboxes. A virtual mailbox gives you the ability to centralize all of your mail in one place, whether you're on the road or living in multiple locations. It's also handy if you run a remote company and want a separate address for your business to keep it separate from your personal address, perhaps to keep your personal address private. In fact, some virtual mailbox services have prestigious addresses in downtown locations, complete with full office services, including a dedicated phone number answered by a receptionist. But that's all a bit beyond the scope of what we're covering today, which is how to get personal mail when you are traveling or living abroad. Despite the virtual moniker, you will get an address with a virtual mailbox that is actually a real physical street address, which you can send all your mail to. In many cases, there's even a physical person there who can sign for packages. Here's how a virtual mailing service works. When something comes in for you, they send you a notification. When you log into your online account in the dashboard, you will see an image of the front of the envelope. From here, you can tell them to shred it 
or hold it for you, which they will do for a limited time, or forward it to you wherever you are, or return to sender, or open it and scan the contents and email you those scans. Those are the basics that all virtual mailing address companies will do. But there are a whole bunch of extras that they may or may not offer, usually for an extra fee. Things like sending and receiving faxes, and even cashing checks. Every virtual mailbox company is different in terms of their fee structure. But more often than not, it makes sense to batch things that you want forwarded instead of having them forward each letter individually as it arrives. In terms of membership fees, you'll generally find that they charge a monthly fee, which will include a certain number of envelope scans and a certain number of page scans per month. And in some cases, it will include some degree of mail forwarding as well. Anything above those quotas will cost you extra. Other services only charge you for the address, and then you just pay for all the additional services as you use them. This is one of the reasons why it's really important to reduce the amount of mail you get as much as possible, because you're ultimately paying for every single piece of mail that comes in for you. I'm including a list of over a dozen traveling mailbox services in the description for you to check out. So, in doing your research to choose the best service for you, ask yourself the following questions. One, how much physical mail do you get on average every month? This will determine the package that you choose. For example, the less mail you get, the cheaper it'll be. Two, can you reduce the mail you get by signing up for online statements? I mentioned this earlier, but it does bear repeating. Paperless is power. Three, how often will you need your mail forwarded versus being able to deal with whatever it is with an electronic scan? Four, do you get checks that need depositing? Not all virtual mailing services can do this, but some can. Five, can your address be a PO box? Some virtual mailing services still show your address as a PO box, which some organizations won't accept or ship to. Six, is having your address in a certain city or state important to you? For example, for US taxpayers, the state you reside in makes a huge difference to the amount of tax you pay. Seven, do you want to have an address in a different country entirely? Virtual mailboxes are great for that. Eight, do you need your virtual mailbox to integrate with certain software? Some services sync perfectly with a variety of programs. In the description, you will find a link to an article on my website that summarizes some of the features, as well as some pros and cons, of all the main virtual mailing services. So you can check that out if you want to learn more about which services connect with what software. And now for my bonus tip. If you're going away for a predetermined amount of time and you plan on keeping your home, have you considered getting a house sitter? This is somebody who would stay in your home and take care of things while you're away. It's fantastic for people who have pets. It even works well if you don't. House sitters are a great security presence. They can keep your place running smoothly and they can take care of anything that arises in your absence that needs addressing. They can also keep your plants alive and pets as well if you have them and don't plan to travel with them and they can check your mail for you and let you know when stuff comes in that needs your attention. The best house sitting gig that I ever had was for a summer in Switzerland. I had full run of the house in Zurich and the Alpine cottage near Lucerne and use of the car. I could be wherever I wanted to be and when, and my only duties were to keep the orchids alive and to let the homeowners know when mail came in and to follow any instructions they had regarding the mail, just like a virtual mailing service would do. Unfortunately, one of the orchids didn't survive the ordeal, but their mail was all in order when they returned from their trip and I bought them a new orchid. So no harm, no foul. If you want to learn more about house sitting, check the description for some resources. While you're down there, please subscribe to this show and share it with anybody you know who likes to travel smart in style. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA the professional hobo, and I will catch you next time. We'll be right